extension cord. I'm gonna freaking cut that thing. But I promised you guys a gold start. I'm gonna do it freaking in a garage. Ready? Do you need it? No, you don't need it. Do you want it? Yeah, probably. There's no freaking brackets from the floorboards or anything. 25 years ago. Think about it. 25 years ago. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It's like... years ago let me show you what I'm talking about so over 25 years ago this was my one of my first deployments operation Southern watch I was in the Air Force for four years and this was back in October of 1997 over 25 years ago can you believe that I'm 50 years old now but uh, Operation Southern Watch, after the war in Iraq, that started in 1990. What we did in Operation Southern Watch, we reinforced the no-fly zone. They couldn't fly in certain airspaces, and uh, that's why we were there. Over in United Arab of Emirates, where it is extremely hot. Been to uh, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, Bahrain, UAE. Uh, just to name uh, a couple places when I was uh, in the military, in the Air Force. And the reason why I'm telling you guys this, obviously, it is Veterans Day. So for all of you veterans out there, love every single one of you guys. Happy Veterans Day. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your commitment, your sacrifice to this great country of ours. And to all the people that are in the service now or people that have gotten out of the service. Happy Veterans Day. Make sure you get your free meal <laughs> at uh, Denny's or Applebee's, wherever you want to go, or your free donut at uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Today's video, finally, it is actually raining outside because we are getting the remnants of that hurricane that just hit in Florida yet again, just a couple, what, a couple weeks after Everybody got hit in Florida with the last hurricane. Boom, here in November, everyone got hit again. So I wish uh, everyone, I hope everyone is doing well. Thoughts and prayers are with everyone in Florida. In today's video, finally, I'm gonna do the review video about the bike. I have about 1,300 miles. I'm looking at Mad Max, it's right there. I have about 1,300 miles on the bike and I'm gonna tell you what I think about it. And whether you agree with me or you disagree with me, that is fine. These are going to be my opinions, my thoughts. I'm gonna tell you guys what I like about this bike. I'm gonna tell you guys what I think about this build, Mad Max, and our previous bike, Silverback. I'm gonna tell you guys what I think about both of them. I'm gonna tell you guys which one I like better. I'm going to also tell you why I did the components that I chose on this build and why I didn't go a different way. I'm gonna sit on the bike, show you guys how it looks. And, and we did get a couple other things you've probably seen in a past video, but I'll show them to you guys again. So stay tuned guys, thanks for watching. If you guys are new to this channel, if you freaking like Harley Davidson content, if you like bagger content, hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up, really helps out the channel, appreciate it. And uh, let's get over to the bike. All right, guys, I was going to put the camera up on the tripod, but uh, I want, while I'm talking, I want you guys to see what I'm talking about and up close. So I'm going to just hold the camera, and as I go through the entire bike, I'm going to show you what we did to the bike. So this way you guys could get a really, really good visual. So let me start off with the uh, fender. As you guys know, before I had the carbon fiber fender, right? So I thought I liked the carbon fiber fender and I did kind of, I did kind of like it, but then honestly, it, it wasn't kind of, I don't know, it just wasn't doing it for me. And I'll tell you why. From right here, it was really like 
round and bulbous and it was kind of sitting high. This space right here was like, literally I could put like three fingers in it and I didn't, I didn't care for that look. Even though I painted it black, I really didn't care for the look. It just, it just couldn't friggin' grow on me no matter what I did. Even after I painted it black, still didn't change my feelings about it. Every time I came down into the garage, um, I just wasn't crazy about it. So after uh, looking, I mean, there's like literally all the carbon fiber fenders are like six, seven, eight months out. I was at the dealership and lo and behold, what's there? Road Glide ST. I'm looking at it. Boom. There's my answer. So we have, we installed a Road Glide ST uh, front fender in black straight from Harley Davidson. I love it. I'm in love with this fender. I think it just looks great on the bike. It just matches perfectly. So <clears throat> that's one thing we did. I had some uh, axle nut actually covers Willie G up in the cabinet. I put them on. They're actually matte finish. I don't know if I care for that either. So I might be replacing them to a high gloss black. Uh, but for now, they're good. Brake system, I am absolutely leaving it. The brake system, after going through what I did with the big brake rotor kits, problems, rotors warping, I'm leaving this stock rotor on here. Um, the braking system is fine for now. If um, later, if I need to change anything, I probably will only change the pads, maybe to a better performing pad. But other than that, that, that stank. So then we did the Santoro Fabworks crash bar. We took off the stock crash bar. We installed the Santoro Fabworks bar. I think it matches this build, it looks great. We also had to remove the chrome bracketry and install this one. This one you could get on eBay. Uh, that's where I picked that up. Santoro Fabrics, that's straight from the company. And then this bracket basically is to hold your entire fairing. So instead of chrome brackets that came down and were mounted to the crash bar, I got this black uh, kind of like a U-bracket, which is meant for this and that just cleaned everything up. I don't have any kind of bracketry coming down to the crash bar. Love the look. Uh, crash bar is great. Only thing I added was 3M uh, slip resistant material on here. It's fantastic. Boot doesn't slide at all. So let's move, let's see, zero 3D lighting, very important. I have the vent, uh, let me turn on the bike really quick. I'm gonna go over something really cool I have to show you guys. So I got the vent trim lighting. Hang on. Let me lower the radio. I got the vent trim lighting right here. Uh, I got the road blades, which are right here, and then fang bezel lights. Absolutely super bright. LED, white halo turn signals, and obviously the light cannons. And as far as the lighting goes, I love how it looks. I get a lot of compliments on the bike. As you guys can see, like the two light cannons are kind of in line with the turn signals. Crazy, crazy bright. The light cannons are killer. Two, 300 yards in front, you could literally see the entire road. I ride at night. I'm rocking the, the bag blades, also the Latitude tail light with the curved license plate, all from Ciro 3D. If you wanna check it out, link will be down below in the video description. So that's what we have for the lighting. Love it. So now, look how nice that looks. So now let's go up higher. If you guys remember, I always rocked on Silverback the nine inch Sport Flare windshield. And I had the nine inch sport flare on this, but I always knew that I got a little bit, little tiny bit of wind, right? Kind of like hitting me in the top of the head. So Clockworks reached out to me, said, listen, we're making an 11 inch. We got an 11 inch now. 
because before you'd have to jump from the nine inch all the way to the 14 inch and what would happen my opinion again guys the nine inch sat like right here the 14 was like up here i think it took a little bit away of the look of the bike but again you are going to get obviously with a 14 inch no no comparison you're literally going to get the best wind and element protection that you can get with a 14 inch that's just obviously right it's taller but i just i like it a little lower because i like the sporty look i want to keep the sporty look of it so this is the 11 inch it doesn't take away none of the look of the bike and that extra two inches now the wind perfect it goes right over my head so i'm six foot two inches tall just so you guys have a comparison i have about a 32 um, 32, 33 inch inseam. So you guys know when I sit on the bike and I weigh about 217 pounds. So this windshield is perfect for my height. And I'll show you guys when I sit on the bike later, I'm gonna put the camera up so you see because there's a huge difference with the suspension as well. So that's what we did with the windshield. Windshield lighting fender, brakes staying the same. Uh, crash bar we went over so now uh, let's go over to the engine and I'm going over the engine next because it's honestly not the biggest thing you hear me it's not the biggest thing that I love about this bike I'll let you guys <clears throat> understand that here in a couple minutes but what we did with the bike was SNS 475 cam we installed some SNS new lifters in it, some SNS adjustable push rods, uh, did a stage two, Dave dyno tuned the bike, and we installed this absolutely ridiculously gorgeous Chromeworks two into one outlaw pipe, which sounds like a symphony. It's music to your ears. The lope of the 475 cam and how Dave tuned the bike, it's just ba -ba 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 -ba. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And it just sounds amazing because now you have all of the cylinder pressures going into a single muffler. So it's more thumpy than a two into two. Even though the Chromeworks two into two Eclipse on previous bike on Silverback sounded amazing. The two into one is just a different, a little bit of a different animal. I love it. I love it. So this also has the reducer baffle in it. You may have to reach out, okay? It's just a little tiny reducer baffle. You may have to reach out to Chromeworks if you want that, because I don't know if it's on, if it's on their website, but um, this is the two into one Chrome Outlaw pipe. Even the heat shields are one piece. It's sick, it's beautiful. So that's what we're running as far as engine goes. We're running a Screaming Eagle high flow air cleaner. And basically that's in its dyno tune. It's got, came out to be about 116 horsepower, about 115 foot pounds of torque. That's pretty good for a 107. So now if you do the same thing, stage two on a 114, and I'm talking same thing, 475 cam, exhaust, blah, blah, blah. From a 107 to 114, you're gonna get about 118 horsepower, 119 horsepower, but you're going to get around 130 foot-pounds of torque, 128 to 130. So kind of a bigger jump. So, but all that, that's for another video. If you guys want a video like that, I'll, uh, I'm probably gonna actually make one because I have so many dyno sheets over there from Dave that we could probably come up with a nice, comparison video about the difference in cams and engine sizes and all of that so that's what's done to the bike and it's perfect it sounds phenomenal it has almost 40 horsepower more than stock and 30 foot pounds more than stock so it has plenty of power it sounds ridiculous it sounds beautiful so i don't need any more power you definitely don't need any more power it has enough power to pass people and when you want to rip on it it's got enough power so i'm super happy with the stage two and we'll go over more stuff later in the video so that that's what was done to the engine 
Saddleman seat. Most of you guys like the white. I got another one actually coming that's actually in black because I love this seat, but I did notice, obviously, you're from my jeans and all my jeans, I'm not gonna sit on the seat with a brand new pair of jeans uh, that are like unwashed because then it will probably bleed on. But I noticed even from leaves riding when I was riding and leaves coming across and literally getting stuck between my inner thigh and the seat and I don't notice, they kind of make a little stain if you guys could see right there. So um, the white seat, I think I'm going to keep uh, put on maybe if I want to go to a, a bike night or whatever every now and then. But I really do like the seat. You got to see the bike in person. Um, a lot of people said that. It doesn't look that good maybe in a video. But in person, the seat looks really good. It just breaks up the black a little bit. But anyway, we got another seat coming. A black one with some silver stitching. Same style, same design. Step up. I probably said SDC in the past, I apologize, but to correct myself, it's a step up. And this seat, I don't know why, because of these pleats right here, or because it's a step up, this seat, no joke, twice as comfortable. And the last SDC Pro Gripper seat I had on Silverback was super comfortable. This one's even more comfortable. So in love with the seat, we're getting another one. Stay tuned to watch that. Uh, what else did we do? We took off the uh, passenger pegs and got these Kuriak and block off plates. I don't ride anybody on the bike ever. What else can I show you guys that we did? Uh, engine wise, that's it. Trans transmission stock, clutch stock, compensator stock. Kept the belt drive obviously on there. No need to change to the chain drive. Uh, we have no fans on it, no love jugs, no oil cooler fan. It's only um, a 107. I would highly recommend if you're going big bore kit or big power, you got to have a fan on it. And because the more power you have, the more heat you're good, that engine is going to produce, especially if you're changing compression ratios and running higher compression ratios. The bike is going to put out more heat, period. Higher to compression ratio, the more heat, the more power. It's inevitable. You need uh, a better way or more support in cooling the bike. Okay, so before we get into the main stuff here, uh, let me go over right here. I have the stock chrome mirrors. I might change them to the black ones. I might not, but I'm just going to keep probably the stock mirrors on it for now, unless I really see a mirror that I fall in love with, but I'm fine with it. But I think I'm going to get black ones because the whole, everything on the bars are black and stuff. So we'll see about that. Flow Motorsport levers. You know, I talk about them all the time. Fantastic. So we put them on. We got the Memphis Shades hand guards. Let me tell you, some of you, some of you people commented like the hand guards don't look good. Uh, again, it's preference. Whether you like how they look or you don't like how they look, that's fine. But I'll have to tell you, if you ride 25,000 miles in a year, you're going to want them. You're going to need them. So for the people that are probably saying, I don't like them or you don't need them, you don't ride 25,000 miles in a year. I'll tell you, because if you do ride the 25,000 miles like we do, Okay, like we put on silver back in just a little over a year. You will notice you are going to need them on so many different levels. Getting beamed with the rock and the knuckles doesn't feel good. Rain at 70, 80 miles an hour feels like pins and needles. Um, wind, wind protection. So I'll give you an example. With the hand guards, if it is literally like in the 40s, 50s, and it's chilly, if you have a light glove on without the hand guards, your hands will get numb without a doubt 100%. With the Memphis Shades hand guards, let me tell you something, your hands are not going to freeze, period. That's just the truth because you're blocking all that cold wind off of your hands. So they are huge. I ride a lot. I'm keeping them on. I love actually how they look. And even more, they just work. 
they just work. So they're staying on. If you guys do ride a lot, give them a shot because I'll tell you, you won't be disappointed. So let's get into the nitty gritty now. The tires are stock, the wheels are stock. We're keeping all that stock for now. Um, I like the way the wheels look. We might get them powder coated down the road, but I don't really think so. Let me see what else can I talk about here. So now, uh, obviously we got the uh, Tour Pack uh, docking hardware and all that. I have the Tour Pack here. I love it. I love the Tour Pack. Um, I'm going to show you in another video. We're going to be mounting. We're going to be mounting a rack on top of the Tour Pack. And quick peek, boom, right there. Yeah, we got another bag from, I keep friggin' hitting my head on this. We got another bag from Ciro 3D, which is going to make life a lot easier on the long trips. So we'll do that in another video. So let's get down to it. These items, these items are what absolutely transformed this bike for me. Let's go over the first item here. As you guys know in the video, we took off the cowbells. We took off the top uh, cover, top co chrome cover. And now when you look on the, at the bike, it just looks really sporty. So what we did was we went Diamond Lane 2 Plus. So that means two inches taller, Diamond Lane, black anodized fork tubes. And inside these fork tubes are a GP plus two cartridge. And they are sprung, sprung for my weight. So that means when you order this suspension, they say, hey, John, what do you weigh? I weigh 217 pounds. So they spring the cartridge to give you the proper spring that can support 217 pounds. So this way, you're not nose diving. This way the bike stands firm and steady when you sit on it. It happens to a lot of like dirt bikes, a lot of other bikes, Yamaha, Tenere, 700, very lightly sprung. A lot of these bikes are lightly sprung. Then when you buy them, you weigh over 200 pounds. You got to respring the front and the back suspension. So that's basically what happened with the front. The front cartridges are sprung for my weight. So the front is two inches taller than stock. So that's that. Now the back, uh, I would have went with Legend on the front, but Legend doesn't make the uh, plus two that work with the black anodized Diamond Lane fork tubes. But check this out. I could have did this. Maybe a lot of you guys don't know this, but I could have went Legend plus two cartridge in the front and used a plus two Harley Davidson cartridge, but it would not have been black. It would have been, you know, like this color, regular silver satin color. And you know where those fork tubes are stock? They come off of a trike. I didn't even know that. So that's a tidbit of information from you guys. So all the trikes come with a plus two fork tube on the front, which I could have used that, but I wanted the black one. Hopefully you guys understand that. Um, so since I wanted to use the black, we had to go with the GP style uh, shock in the front cartridge. What we're running on in the back is the Legend Suspension Revo Arc right here. You guys could see right there. These are reservoir canisters and you're not really going to be able to see, but we have 14 inch shocks on the back. You can see both canisters right there, legend. So meaning front is two inches taller, back is two inches taller. The whole bike is sitting two inches taller. And let me tell you, you can tell. The whole tire and wheel, you can see more from the side and from the back. It is definitely sitting taller. Mind you, I got a plus one kickstand and the thing is still leaning over quite a bit. That kickstand drag specialties is one inch longer. Can't find a plus two, otherwise I would have put it on. If anybody knows of any company out there that has a plus two, please Hit me up on an email because otherwise I'm going to have to, I think, bunking 
makes a block that you put under the kickstand. I don't know if I like that look, so, it, but if anything, if all else fails, I'll have to do that. So the whole bike is basically sitting two inches taller. And I'll, I'll go back and tell you why this is so huge. So that's the suspension. So now the, this is really where it gets crazy trick. Hopefully you guys could see. So now in here we did the Krauss triple tree, which basically eliminates where the gauges were. It eliminates all that plastic. Now with the triple tree and all of that cleaned up, you could actually, hopefully you guys could see that. You could actually right there, you could adjust the preload and dampening, everything rebound on both sides on my suspension. Whereas before you can't get to it because all the plastic, you would have to take off all the, that nacelle, that plastic uh, covering that's all on there. But now it is all open. So it just looks really, really super clean in there. We went with a eight inch kickback riser from Kraus. So that's eight inches. And this bar is a ODI, Kraus ODI bar, which is a four inch rise. So we got a total of 12 inches. We went with, went with the uh, Kraus uh, perch clamps right there, a lot smaller. We also went with Harley Davidson heated grips. Oh my God, I should have had them on silverback the entire time. I just did a camping video, which I actually pulled the video down. Um, I wasn't happy with it. I probably got to retweak it and put it up. So anyway, just rode back from that. It was like 39 degrees out. I had my thin glove on with the Memphis Shades hand guards and with the heated grips on literally a low setting, my hands were on fire. They were boiling. So that is really gonna help because you guys know I ride all winter long. The bike never gets put away. So that is going to help. Um, I would highly recommend you guys getting some uh, heated grips. That is a, a huge thing. So anyway, back to the bar. So this is basically a 12 inch rise, as you guys could see on the bike and very comfortable, very, very, very comfortable. Cause now not only is it kicked back, it's more closer to my body, but I could also adjust bar, whether it's swept back or sweep it forward. Right now it's in a per perfect position uh, for how I'm sitting and for my body, my arm length. Love, love how it looks. And let me tell you, the control you have, there's a reason why they have T-bars on a lot of these performance baggers or mostly T-bars. You get a lot of control from the bike. You get a lot of feedback from the bike. Um, so I'm super happy with that. And then the third thing is I finally got to put on the MX style Arlen Ness floor pegs and right there are the mid controls. So before the floorboard was like right here, if you guys could see that and your foot would like be right there, but now my foot is here. The mechanical, I guess, advantage, if you want to call it, it is greater. It just feels so good. And let me tell you, these Arlen Ness components, they're really, really nice. They just, everything is machined, beautiful, the whole setup. And look at this. This is, this is huge. There's no friggin' brackets from the floorboards or anything. That I could I could literally probably drop a knee on this thing around a turn and nothing will scrape. I mean look at it with with the peg up. Look at that. There is there's nothing, absolutely nothing that could possibly scrape. So that's why now I just feel more confident taking a turn. And um, we'll talk about more stuff on that, but let me show you the other side. Even the shifting. So this is the shift side, right? You got the MX peg right there. It's just the shift because I guess the linkage and how the mechanical advantages, how the linkage was designed, the shifts are like super close. They're not like long and clunky anymore. They're really tight. It's like bunk, 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 bunk. It's like really nice. It's hard to explain. 
it, it feels almost like a sport bike. They're just short, short shifts instead of that dunk, dunk, dunk. You know, it's it's a less of a less of a throw. Um, really love it. Those were the three biggest items, the three most biggest items that I thought absolutely transformed this bike, and I'll tell you guys why. I absolutely am in love with how Mad Max came out. I truly am. Is it better, in my opinion, um, for my riding style and how I want the bike? Is it better than Silverback? Yes, absolutely. I like Mad Max better, even though it had a custom paint job, even though it had 154 horsepower, even though it had everything done to the bike other than the transmission. Um, I love this bike better than I did Silverback. Even though I love that bike, don't get me wrong, I don't wanna hear no hate comments over here. But being on this bike now, with the suspension being higher, with the bar set up in the mid controls, I, it just transformed the bike for me. I love it. And here's why. The bar setup, even though the LA Choppers bars, I think are the closest bars that you can compare to a T-bar, the T-bar is just a little tad wider. And because of how the shape and design is, and because they're kind of not only with the kickback riser, you could adjust the bar, they feel phenomenal. You just feel like you have a real advantage because of the width and because of the design and because how close you can put the bars to you they feel absolutely fantastic so that's and, and also the look it's just super super clean and really just nice simple but premium products you see there just I'm absolutely in love with the bar setup as far as the suspension goes on Silverback, when I sat in the bike, when I sat in the saddle, even though the suspension was done front and back on that bike, it was basically stock ride height. So when I sat in the bike, I don't know if you guys could understand or, or feel what I'm saying. When I sat in the bike, being six foot two, it felt like I was kind of dropping and sitting on the sled. No joke, because it was just, it's just too low. Even if I sit on a stock Harley, anyone in a dealership, from my height, it just feels like I really am sitting low to the ground. I just, I'm not crazy about that feeling. So now with this bike actually raised two inches taller, my legs, when I sit on the bike, my literally my legs, and again, I wouldn't recommend doing a plus two front and back for anyone that say probably under like five foot nine, five foot 10 inches, probably wouldn't be good for you. But if you are a taller person rider, I would highly recommend you doing this. You sit up higher, the bike feels more like, I, it's really hard to explain. Not only are you sitting higher, but the entire, your leg kind of isn't bent as much because the bike is sitting taller. You just, you feel more like in control of the bike and in control of the road. It's really, really hard to describe, but the seating position is absolutely perfect for me now. So that's another thing. Now with the mid controls, being that where I rest my foot now, it's kind of more underneath my ass. So now it's not like forward. And what was happening was when I used to kind of sit my feet on the floorboards. Now you have all that weight kind of sitting on your spine. And after a while, your back starts, or my, I should say, my back started to hurt. But now with the mid controls, um, and it's like on other bikes, not on Harleys, but on other motorcycles where you do, where the controls are kind of more underneath your weight, your legs are taking a lot of the load and everything isn't transferred to your back. And because my leg is kind of slightly bent, it just feels more comfortable for me. So that's why I love that. And if I want to stretch out my legs, I'll just kick them up on the Santoro crash bar. But yeah, all in all, this setup right now, suspension, bars, and mid controls were the biggest, biggest thing I have done to this bike. 
And absolutely 100%, I can tell you guys, I like this bike better for those reasons um, because it just feels so good to ride. Now, as far as the engine goes, yeah, I mean, obviously we're talking about 40 less horsepower than Silverback. Yes, it's a lot. Do you need it? No, you don't need it. Do you want it? Yeah, probably. <laughs> but this is the main reason why I did not go big bore kit or high horsepower on this build. So here you go. This is the main reason because <clears throat> I got uh, this question quite a lot in the past couple weeks. Why did you only go stage two? So I'll tell you, from my past experience with Silverback, with the 128, with the 130, we blew the clutch twice with the 128. We had the obviously the engine trouble, but thank God we were close to home. So here's my thoughts. I put 20, almost 25,000 miles on Silverback in about 14 months that I, I had the bike for two years, but it was at uh, Dave's by JD Cycle Works probably 10 months. So I had the bike, I, I rode the bike 14 months. We put about 25,000 miles on the bike, which is quite a bit. I expect to put even more miles on this bike. So this is what's going to happen. Because of the time we live in, with parts being either at a shortage or you just can't get them or takes too long to get them, nobody has them, whatever, right? If I had a big board kit on this bike and a upgraded, say, chain drive, upgraded compensator, upgraded clutch and clutch basket, and all this high performance work done to the motor, with my plans of going on some really long destinations in the next year and two. Just say, hypothetically, we're out in California, we're out in Texas, we're out here or there, and something happens to the motor, to the chain drive, to the compensator, to the uh, clutch and clutch basket. What are my odds, honestly, guys, think about it. What are my odds of me getting the bike repaired? What are my odds? probably slim to none. Will I be able to find a Harley Davidson dealer? Chances are absolutely yes, they're all over the place. But to work on something like this, not like this, but meaning if it was all worked, right? High performance engine, clutch, chain drive and all that. Um, first of all, Harley Davidson is not, definitely is not going to have the parts to repair it. Are they going to be, um, experienced enough to work on that they really don't do that stuff unless you're like moonshine harley davidson they're in tennessee that's really the only dealership i know of that has the absolute experience and know-how in doing high performance builds um not to say again that a lot of the harley davidsons do not have very, very skilled technicians, which they do, but they're not really used to these types of builds, if you catch my drift. So I'm gonna run into a problem with that, and also the parts. With this build, chances are, I just go to a Harley-Davidson dealer, they're going to be able to fix it. They're going to have the parts, other than the camshaft, which camshafts really don't go bad, um, unless you have a gazillion miles on it. But stage two, Harley Davidson is going to be able to fix the bike. Even if I have to throw in a stock cam back into the bike, my chances of getting the bike repaired are great, are great. And I do, I can't afford to be somewhere far and having a gigantic build as far as the engine goes and everything else not being able to fix the bike, being stuck somewhere, leaving the bike, having to fly home or something, or having to trailer the bike back home to JD Cycle Works. So hopefully you guys understand that was my thought process on just sticking with a stage two. Is a, is a high performance build um, reliable? Sure, it is. Um, again, what would I say, is it more reliable than this? I'm gonna say obviously no. 
because all of that horsepower, obviously something's going to have to take a toll. Those are the main reasons. And again, I had on the T-Man Performance 130 motor, I had, I think about 14,000 miles and it ran, before I got rid of Silverback, it ran beautiful. So I'm not knocking a build. Um, if you like power, man, if I literally, if I wasn't going to put on 25, 30,000 miles every year on a bike, I'd do it again. So again, I'm not knocking the build. It's just, you guys know, if you put that much power in, you got to do everything else down the chain. Um, if that's your riding style, you could do a big bore kit and leave everything else alone. If you ride soft, you know, if you don't hammer on the throttle, if you don't dump the clutch, if you don't downshift hard, <clears throat> you know, you could leave everything else alone. But if you do ride hard, without a doubt, 110%, you got to do everything down the chain. Otherwise, it's going to break. So that's kind of my thought process uh, on leaving it stage two. But has enough power. It sounds fantastic. I have the bar set up, which are absolutely trick now and feel comfortable. Great seat fantastic suspension with the plus two. I am super st stoked having this suspension. I, I literally like, when I come down into the garage now, I honestly just wanna hop on the bike and just get out and ride. And that's, that's how much fun it is to ride the bike now. Also check out uh, these other cool things. One thing I did mention, if you remember, we took out the dongle out of there. We put in, you could check out that video. We put in the Bluetooth connector in here. And you remember when I was telling you guys wireless charging right here, well, that's the quad lock. And the only reason I'm using a quad lock is because I have the quad lock in all the vehicles and I don't want to go switching stuff. Otherwise I would have used the Ciro 3D wireless phone charger, but I just don't want to switch everything over in all the cars. And um, this is really easy. You just put it on here. And what I did was, if you guys can see, this is all quad lock wireless. The wire runs down right here. And I actually installed a USB port right there. And that wire Hopefully you guys can see this. That wire runs underneath the tank. I popped the tank off and it's direct mounted to the battery. So now, uh, let me hop over and I will explain to you guys. I'll show you guys this really quick. Sorry if this is gonna be a long video. Hopefully you stay with me. But see, if I just go on the bike, boom, my phone's there. And not only that, it is charging. Do you see what I'm saying? I don't have to plug in any wire. If I'm riding in the rain, a lot of times when I had the wire plug, the phone would stop charging because water would get there. I'm not going to have that issue anymore. This is another cool thing. I have the lock to lock the steering column right there, okay? But now, if you guys are asking, I don't have the lock to turn the bike on. So with this setup, okay, what Dave did was, watch this, this is like a CVO now. My key fob is in the cubby right there. Watch this. Bike turns on. You follow what I'm saying? So now, a lot of you guys didn't understand this. So watch the screen now. I'm going to plug in my phone. It's going to be charging now, right there. It's charging. You can see the lightning bolt. And now, automatically, I got Apple CarPlay. It's going to take a couple seconds. Where before, look at that, boom, I got Apple CarPlay. I showed you guys the video with the dongle in the front. It's a $15 piece. You put that on and now you do not have to put the wire from the cubby to your phone to get Apple CarPlay. Hopefully that all makes sense. So now I'm wireless with the Apple CarPlay and I'm wireless charging my phone. I absolutely love it. All I do is boom, boom, it's charging. And I love that the bike is keyless. Uh, I don't have to turn nothing. As long as I got my key fob on me, I can turn the bike on. But I guess, I guess that's it. We got the, uh, I showed you guys the tour pack. We have some awesome Hogworks uh, bag liners 
in there. Check out Hogworks, they got great products. And um, honestly, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, I am done doing anything to the bike. I'm, I'm honestly done. I love how it came out. We are going to pop on the other black seat, depending where I wanna go. I'll probably leave the white seat, like I said, because I, I love it, but it's probably gonna get dirty. Uh, like I said, with the leaves and stuff, so I'll probably be running the black one. But the bike looks absolutely killer. Let me know what you guys think in the black and chrome. I'm super happy with it, super happy with how it came out. Hopefully you guys understand, uh, you know, why I think the way I do about this bike against Silverback. But uh, this bike is just literally, this is how I would want every single one of my Harley Davidsons in the future with the mid controls, the bar setup and the suspension. And the way that pipe sounds is absolutely amazing. Hopefully you guys liked this video. Do me a favor. Sorry it was a little long, but I did want to explain everything. I do like this bike better. Sorry guys, I like it better. Hopefully to see you guys out on the road somewhere and happy Veterans Day again. Love you guys. Thank you for your service. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out. Hey guys, sorry I'm doing this at the end of this video but I just got done editing the video and I forgot to show you guys how I look sitting on the bike and I promised you guys a cold start. So here it is. All right, so here we go sitting on the bike. And as you guys can see, look at my leg, kind of how straight it is, or straighter I should say, because before, literally it was like this. If you guys are curious to see, sit on your bike and you could see how much your leg is bent. So that's why I mean it's so much more comfortable for me is because the bike is sitting higher and I just feel I have more control of the bike instead of like literally my legs were like that. This seat is a little higher, I believe, than the STC Pro Gripper seat. So that's actually making this bike actually feel a lot better for me. But definitely the plus two suspension uh, helps a lot. You guys can see how my arms are. They're kind of pretty much straight right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Really, really comfortable. If I needed the bars to move back or forward, super easy. Eight bolts, loosen them up and pull the bars back or forward. Love it, absolutely love this bike. All right guys, let me open the, oh my God, my head again on that stupid extension cord. I'm gonna freaking cut that thing. But anyway, can't pull the bike out because look at the horrible weather, but I promised you guys a gold start. I'm gonna do it freaking in a garage. Ready?